Hey guys, how are we? Uh, we are live. Uh, we uh, we we're getting there. We have got one half of the the duo on hand. I'll bring uh, Benny on in a minute. We're having a little bit of dramas <coughs> with uh, Glenn uh, getting organised, but I'm sure he'll be fine. He's on his way back from the shops apparently. But uh, a couple of comments in there, so we'll get going. Actually, we'll bring Benny on now. This is the trainer of Liam Wilson, Ben Harrington. How are you, mate? Good, thanks, mate. How are you? Really good. And, uh, yeah, as I said, we're just hoping that uh, Glenn can sort of get organised. I think once you, you get uh, around that age, uh, technology is a little bit of a challenge. But uh, he is a master of it. But, mate, we've got a few people in the chat. So, mate, as I said, it's great to have you along. Uh, you're obviously still in Las Vegas as well at the moment. Oh, there he is. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, we're in Las Vegas at the moment. We've got two weeks to go, so everything's going smoothly. Good stuff. Well, we'll bring on, while we're waiting there, we'll bring... Glenn Jennings into the party. How are you, Glenn? Good, Lyndon. How are you, mate? Good, mate. You had to step out for a bit, did you? I was having a little bit of trouble getting on. I'm not all that technical on these things, and it was giving me some weird instructions, but Benny just flicked me the quickest way to do it, so I'm good to go. Nah, that's good. Well, I just said to everyone, the way we're working is uh, the reason it's live, which is always good because some everyone can have a comment and put a question in there as well and, and we'll just see how we go. So again, really appreciate you guys jumping on. I know you're flat out, Benny. We're just asking uh, in Vegas, how long are you there for before you head down to Arizona? Is that me, sorry? Yeah, mate, yeah, yep. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So uh, we've been here for, I think, about four weeks now. So we've got two more weeks to go. We just had a, our last 12-round spar today. We'll, we'll drop the sparring down next week. Um, yeah, so then I think one more week here, then we head off to Arizona for fight week. Good stuff. And Glenn, mate, probably the first question I've sort of had on my mind for well, since th these two fights have been announced is the logistics of, as a manager, trying to get all this together. You've got Tim, obviously, in Las Vegas. The training camp, obviously, has been okay. But now you're going to have Liam in, uh, in Glendale, Arizona. So the logistics of getting two of these two probably the biggest fights of their career uh, on the same weekend, twenty four hours apart in different cities. Yeah, it's an interesting one, mate. It's not not what you'd call ideal by any means from a management perspective. But we've got two very good camps and two very good teams of boys, and they they offer me plenty of support, and um, we'll get it done, mate. Um, we're, we're planning on uh, bundling the boys up off to Arizona. I'm going to send. Uh, Coach Eric out there, who's a good mate of mine, and he's going to fill in some of the blanks for me whilst he's there. And then we're planning, Matt and myself and George are planning on possibly having to get a private jet to zoom in and um, get with the boys for Liam. And then literally at the end of the night, midnight, whatever, straight back to Vegas for Tim the next day. So logistically, yeah, you've got all of the everything times two. But as I said, when you've got good boys around you and they're uh, they're very respectful of the job that I've got to do as I am of theirs. We get it done. Well, it looks like everyone's sort of getting along well over there. I think you did say on one of the interviews, I think it might have been with D-Style actually, that uh, even though the boys are training in the same gym, they're not actually training together. Benny, you can probably answer that one. Yeah, no, we train at different times. We've got our own little time slot. So we rock up at 11 some days. Some days we rock up at 2 and Nikita and Tim work around that. We work around those guys. So... Yeah, it's each for their own in there, but, you know, we see each other in passing. We hang around sometimes and watch their sparring, and they might watch ours, but um, everyone's locked into their own job, you know. Yeah, so with that too, Ben, I was going to ask you, the Glendale, Arizona, of course, the scene of, we'll call it the heist or controversy, whatever it was that happened against Navarrete. How's it feel and how's the team feel? More importantly, of course, how does Liam feel going back into that environment and uh, going to the same arena where that happened? What was it, about 12 or 18 months ago, whatever it was? Yeah, no, nah, it's um, honestly, mate. He's I've always said it. He's he's a different human being. He he would not have it any other way. I can wholeheartedly say that about him. He um, you know, the the day that I uh, got offered the Valdez fight through Glenn and Matt, it was oh, I had a chat to to Liam, and we had two options. We had another bloke that wasn't so much of a name, but he was still very dangerous, or Valdez. Um, I think I sent Liam a message that night. I woke up to a message back from Liam saying, get me Oscar Valdez. I want two Mexican legends on my resume. I wouldn't mm. want it any other way. Hopefully we get it back in Glendale, Arizona, so I can right my wrong. Glenn, you seem to pick these types of fighters. Uh, we see it all through your stable. Every one of them has exactly the same attitude. Well, I want the best and I want to fight the best and just bring it on. That must be great as a manager trying to get these fights together. 
Oh, absolutely, mate. It's, if you're going to go into this sport um, and you're going to uh, you want to make uh, a statement to the world, then you've got to take the big fights. You've got to stay busy. You've got to be fighting three, four times a year. There's none of this sitting around waiting. It's sort of like a process for me when I'm uh, talking to a new fighter, uh, the potential of coming on board with us is that um, they, it's it's almost like a prerequisite now. If mm. you if you want to come on, you're going to be very busy, and they saw everyone just gets uh, caught up in that. And it's a it's a great way to be. I mean, if you're going to if you're going to be in there and um, and fighting at this level, you you want to be you know well and truly in the thick of it with the best fights every every opportunity that arises. And none of the none of the guys in our stable right now are shying away from anything. Everybody wants the big fights, so it's wonderful. Mm. And and Glenn, I, I've actually had a few people send me the link today, the uh, the, the documentary or whatever it is that's come out today with Tim. Uh, just amazing. I've only seen the two and a half, three minute clip or whatever, but isn't that just uh, it's just amazing watching an Aussie on that stage? We go, we bring back the twenty four seven vibes and everything like that. Must be great to be uh, a part of all that over there. Absolutely awesome, mate. What a, what a buzz to be able to do the very first gloves off episode ever called, produced for, mm. for Prime Amazon. Uh, really special for Tim. We all watched it together today. It launched today at midday uh, and we all watched it together and it was just one of those moments, mate, that we'll always look back on. Uh, you only get you only get a first of uh, once around. So uh, very, very well done, very professionally done and uh, very proud for Tim uh, to be able to, to, to have that opportunity. And I look forward to Liam Wilson getting his turn to do uh, a Gloves Off episode as well. It's just a wonderful thing to be involved in. And I think the great thing about it too from the outside looking is just how well-spoken Tim was. He's obviously been very well-educated in this area and I just thought he, he just handled himself really, really well. So uh, and that's obviously a credit uh, to the team as well. Benny, we've got a question there from uh, Carl, the boxing kangaroo. I'm sure you're familiar with him, Glenn. He's always on every, seems to be on every uh, interview yeah. that you do. Uh, but uh, how's Liam going with the training camp? Uh, tell us a little bit about it. I did see that the sparring, the main sparring partner for this Valdez fight is pretty much a clone of Valdez. How's that been going? Yeah, mate, no, his training camp's going amazing. Um, this is this has been, I mean, it's, it's a cliche thing to say it's been his best one, but it has, um, you know, his weight's right. The training's been great. There's been no injuries. The sparring's been fabulous. I mean, leading into the Navarrete fight, you know, we had a lot of dramas, to be honest, um, in regards to we had a bit of an injury in sparring. We, we didn't even get to do any 12-round spars. Um, we had to go over to London for nine or ten days, and, yeah, mm. it, was, it was a real shit fight. Um, you know, but over here at the moment, we, we, we know what we want, um, and we've got what we want, which is the, the place to train. We get to do it our way. We get to get the sparring that we need. Um, yeah, he's, he's on fire, mate. We, we plan to see the best version of Liam Wilson that night. As everybody can agree, Liam fights better when he's in against better opposition. Uh, he seems to come down to the level of the opposition when he fights different mm. people in Australia so much, more so, sorry. Um, so, yeah, the, everything's going smoothly. I'm very happy with him. We, we finished off our last one today. It was, you know, 12 threes with 30-second rest, and he wouldn't blow out a candle. So fitness isn't a problem. Um, he's nice and sharp. He's nice and healthy. He's in a great headspace. He, he just can't wait to get his hands on him, to be honest. You just said then, uh, Ben, about you know when you're stepping up and down in, I suppose, uh, not quality, but you know at the level of, of competition. How was it? Liam's obviously been at the Navarrete stage and to come back to the domestic scene. How did he handle that? Was it a bit of a job to get him up, or is that's just the way he's wired? Nah, he's, it's never a problem to get him up. He's always keen for a fight. He just loves to fight. Um, but yeah, I mean, you go in as the you go in as the A side and. It's different kind of a pressure when you're the A-side fighter. You know, you're expected to win all the time and there's all this hype around you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, over here now, this is the, these are the fights that really get him excited. Mm. I mean, obviously, we understand that you've got to have those fights back in Australia to get, your, get the ball rolling again. But, yeah, he's, it's these type of fights that he wants to fight. I mean, I've been speaking to him. Obviously, I speak to him every day. But when we sit down and talk about boxing, he's not interested in fighting the, the Australians anymore. I mean, if he's, he's, he's earned his stripes. He, um, you know, he fought Quadro on his sixth fight, who just had a majority decision loss to Jojo Diaz. Mm -hmm. um, those type of, on, on your show, those mm -hmm. type of fights, um, you know, they, they excite him. That's what he gets up for. He doesn't want anything more than that. Mm. 
And Glenn, it's probably a bit of an understatement, mate, but how massive is it to have uh, Tim Zhu headlining T-Mobile Arena at Las Vegas? I did see the post a few weeks ago when he was outside the stadium in Sydney with his little marquee out the front now. How was, that, or how was he walking to the front of T-Mobile Arena and seeing the big billboard out the front? Oh, I think any fighter, it's a culmination of the dreams of the young boy coming through the fight industry to stand outside of T-Mobile uh, and have your name up on the banner in lights. It's a, it's just an amazing feeling. It's a feeling of pride for all of us uh, on the journey with, with Tim to get him to that point. And uh, we're just so excited. I mean, this is a big deal. Keith Thurman's a, an elite level fighter. We know what's in front of us. Um, we're calling it the Aussie takeover. We've got Tim and Liam and Nikita. Um, it's just been terrific, mate. And just, just going back to what Benny said, the... The, the key here, mate, is we've got a really, really stable and uh, professional group of people around us already in the United States who have provided us with the best sparring we could ask for. And uh, all of the boys have literally gone into their camps knowing full well that uh, the guys that they're going in the ring with uh, are top quality. And if they don't perform in sparring, they're, going, they're not going to perform on the night. And uh, you talk about a Valdez clone. Jeez, I wish I just wish everyone could get a look at this guy. He's given Liam plenty, and Liam is responding beautifully. And Benny, to his credit, brought him along almost perfection. We, we've got to that point now, like Benny mm-hmm. just said. He finished uh, 12 uh, threes today um, and literally was ready to go for a run. Uh, so Liam Wilson, Tim Zhu, Nikita Zhu, all the boys will be ready. And I hope every one of the, the Aussies that get their opportunity to come to Vegas um, – get their day uh, with the big marquee outside T-Mobile and that's what we all strive for. Well tell us about that Glenn, How, do you have an idea of the contingent that's going over there? I'll obviously be there I'm in the, the Team Zoo section, what's been the consensus about how many are actually going over there that you can sort of have a, a bit of an estimate? Oh look, uh, I wish I could give you a number mate but I haven't really focused too much on it there's been plenty to do here I do know that there's been a, a huge amount of inquiry directed to me as to uh, what's going on? Can they come and see Tim train? Mm. Can they do this? Can mm. they do that? And um, as as of today, mate, we still we haven't got a complete fight week schedule. We've got media shoots uh, all of next week. Liam's got full days of media next week. We've got very very busy schedules, but nothing concrete that I can go back to the Aussie fans that are travelling and say this is the layout for the week. As mm. soon as I get it, I'll I'll post it and I'll send it to you, Lyndon, and yep. please send it up to everyone. But um, I imagine that the, the zoo supporter area will be just uh, an awesome experience. So if you haven't got tickets, I think that there's still pretty good airfares at the moment. So if you want to come over, it's a great opportunity to witness a, an inaugural event for Amazon Prime and, and Tim Zoo uh, versus Keith Thurman. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever get another like that. The, Keith Thurman's a special. He knows how to sell a fight. He's like Tony Harrison. Mm. Should be good fun. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I think on those airfares, man, I think the, they had the North American special up, and it might have just finished a few days ago, but I think you could get economy oh, okay. airfares for like $1,250, which is just yeah, it was cheap. unheard of these days. So, so Ben, on to yeah. Oscar Valdez. Um, obviously going to be well, probably, I know there's no world title on the line, but it's you've got to put it probably on an equal pegging with the, the Navarrete fight. What's the? I know you can't give too much away, but what are you sort of looking for Liam to get done in this fight to 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 get the job done? And what sort of maybe things you're looking at that you can um, take advantage of with uh, Valdez? Yeah, definitely, mate. It is it is that it is that style of fight, that level of fight. Each fight obviously is different. Styles make fights, and Oscar's a lot shorter than um, Emmanuel Navarrete, and you know he's more explosive. So he brings a, a bunch of different uh, problems that we need to work out. He's got a great left hook. He um he's got good head movement. He's got good he's got good high guard, but this is all stuff that we can exploit um if we get it right on the night, which we plan to. But I mean, yeah, I'd be looking for Liam to. I don't want to give too much away, to be honest. But yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, mm. smash yeah, his head well, in. That's the plan. Just yeah. smash him. <laughs> well, exactly. Well, two time former world champ. I actually had a uh, pleasure of meeting him about seven years ago over at uh, he trains at. Um, where is it? Somewhere in LA there, or he was with, uh, who was it? I can't remember the, the name of the gym, but a really, really lovely guy. But you know, I watched him spar and he loves to get in and dig in. And that's probably why so many people are saying this fight's got fight of the year written all over it. 
Yeah, it's, it, it potentially could be that. Could be um, could be fight of the year for sure. I mean, both of them are very proud men. <clears throat> Valdez is, is is done what he's done, and he's obviously got the experience over us. But you know, we feel like from our last time over here, you know, you can't put a price on what we learnt when we were over here last time, the do's and the don'ts. And you know, I know that there's a different feel in camp at the moment for this one. Um, we don't feel like we're walking into an ambush. We feel like we're going into a gunfight, you know, with, with a gun. So no, I can't wait. And, and I think that Australia will get behind Liam like they do because he represents the country so well. He doesn't, he's not a shit talker. Mm. He's, you know, he's a straight up and down kid and he's, he's really about it. So, yeah, I mean, I just hope everyone gets behind him and, and everyone cheers him on. What's, have you had a, a bit of an idea of uh, a lot, some people coming over for the fight, Benny, in uh, in Glendale? Is there going to be a bit of a you know fight? Uh, people going to both fights, or how's it sort of worked out? Yeah, I've heard I've heard twenty odd people say they're going to go to both fights. A lot of Liam's sponsors come over and support him, like they have throughout his career, which we really appreciate. Oh, um, oh what there do you got is. there? If you get Wilson, on, get Tim a line buy a shirt. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, good on you, really mate. Good That's shirts too. What a guy. Yeah, good on you. Pre- uh, made and got, produced got right in too, my life. Got the other one. Where is it? There you go. Oh, yeah, do it. Uh, good on you, mate. Do it, so, Not yeah. bad. So make sure you get online and That's grab it, everyone, if you're, if you're going to the fight or just watching it on, on, uh, on pay-per-view. I've been watching Very Tim Sparland, and I know, I know Glenn can't talk on it, but I was there for a few of Tim Spars with Mendoza and all these other likes of people. And, I mean, yeah, it'll it'll take – He'll take some beating. I'm telling you, he's he's sharp as I've sharp as I've seen him. He's um he's right on fire. Yeah, well, yeah, sounds the people that are putting on online. I'm sure they're everywhere at the moment, Glenn. Have all the YouTubers out there? But do do you think, Glenn, that because Tim sort of reminds me of the type of fighter who he he needs to be in that element. Like I know he loves Australia and he loved building his career though, but he just seems now that he's more at home than ever on the big stage. It's almost like he was born to be on the biggest stage of all. Yeah. Well, gosh, back in the early days, we produced some posters that said born to fight and, and that's sort of stuck in, in our, in our minds, uh, Lyndon. And um, there's no doubt there can be no doubt left that Tim's done his, service and his apprenticeship through Australia and uh, he's a current world champion and uh, he, he is surprisingly very, very well known in the US. The days of them people saying that they don't know who Tim Zoo is is just a farce. Mm. Um, he's talked about on literally every uh, podcast and channel that runs on the social media. He's very, very popular in that regard and yes, 100% Tim Zoo is, um, is now an elite fighter and uh, this is where he belongs and the big stage... Uh, even for Liam, the big stage brings out a whole new level in these guys. They they uh, they get up for this level. They produce. They step up every time. And as Benny said, uh, Tim sparring uh, is just uh, amazing. It's on it's on target for a great fight. And um, and that's all we'll say on that. But uh, look, Tim Zoo is um, is laying out in front of Tim Zoo where he goes from here and forward is only going to go up and. I think we're going to have a um, a bit of a dynasty. Uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, my fighters at Fight Life Management, I think we're in for a real good run. I think we're going to do immense uh, amount of good things in the next year or so. And um, exciting times, mate. I wish I wish uh, more Aussies could get over here with us and feel this because it's um, it's just an amazing feeling. Mm. Something else, Lyndon, I was going to say, because yep. Glenn can't say it, is that... Um, I've see, I see some stuff online in regards to Tim that, you know, he, people think that he might be a little bit cocky or whatever else they're thinking, but you've got to remember he's in America now. I mean, in Aussie, in Australia, we love the humble guy and all the rest mm-hmm. of it, but if he doesn't start to talk, he's not going to put any bums on seats and no one's going to want to watch him. So people need to realise that about, you know, the situation that he's in now. He can't be humble over here. It's mm-hmm. not going to work. Mm-hmm. If, you want to, if you want to come over here and make a dent in it, you have to talk. And, you know, Tim's starting to do that a lot more. And it's great to see, but people just need to realise what it's about. It's a good yeah, point. It's a very, very, it's a very so, good. Go ahead, Glenn. No, it's a very good point, Lyndon. And you, everyone knows Tim Zoo, the person. They've had six years of getting to know Tim Zoo. Everyone knows he's a humble guy that doesn't like to talk shit and carry on. But the reality is that it's a whole new world. It's a new book over here. And uh, America um, celebrates the loud and the noisy and the 
uh, the guy that stands up and makes the scene. And you can't bring the Australian textbook to Australia. You can remain humble within your soul, but you've got to put on a show, mate. And uh, we've had we've had long discussions and 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 uh, prepped him for a lot of stuff just to say, listen, mate, this is the expectation today, you know. And it comes from the promoters all the way down to the the networks. Everyone wants. Uh, bums on seats everyone wants pay-per-view sales and that doesn't come if you sit quietly and just stare at the camera you've got to be part of the show in america as benny will attest is just one big show well i just thought he handled himself so well at the press conference glenn i know he seemed a little bit uncomfortable at the start but i think he really as he sort of warmed into it and and i think the the next time they had the little instagram thing when tim actually called into i think it was the sean porter show i thought he really got the upper hand of that uh in that sort of exchange and uh, for someone like who's such an entertainer like keith Thurman, it must be hard but as i said i thought he handled himself really well and and like you said it's not really his his sort of thing but uh he's going to have to probably get used to that if he's going to be fighting over there more often yeah he's working his way into that new persona and um I think Benny was a little bit like me. We're, very, we're defensive of our fighters. We always look after our fighters. And when there's a, a criticism thrown at one of them and it's it's just not the case, as you know, a lot of the, the chat about, oh, Tim's too cocky and he's he's ahead of himself, it, it is part and parcel of the business of boxing, which when you get down to the actual business of boxing in America, it's very, very different to Australia. And you've got to adapt. Uh, but I think those that, in the, that know Tim will know there will always be Tim. And he'll always be that humble guy underneath. Mm. But it's part of the game that he's got to do over here. And it's not easy. Liam's the same. It's not easy for Liam to get on there and, and give someone a spray either. These guys don't come from that area. So uh, they're doing a great job. And like you said, I think they become more comfortable with it the more times they get on the big stage. And um, uh, it's a good learning curve for all the Aussie boxers to understand that very early in your career, learn the basics of being able to sell yourself. It's part of the business of boxing. Yeah, it's your, it's, your, it's your Hardmans, it's your Jack Brubakers back in Australia. I mean, Sleeves did a pretty good job of it recently. I mean, yeah. it's not in our culture to do that. We don't really like it, but yeah. you've got to get people to watch the sport. You know, there's no point being the, the best fighter if no one knows you can fight and no one's watching you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of for it. I, I understand what it is and it needs to happen if you, if you want to get bums on seats and you want to get pay-per-view sold. So, I mean, that's what that's what... Is going to make the sport bigger, having big promotions with lots of people watching the sport, and that's the way to do it. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Like, what's Danny Green without Mundine? You know. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Well, I was just going to say to you, Ben, with uh, Liam. Liam looks more awkward than sort of what Tim used to. But as you said, you've got to you've got to do these these sort of things to get uh, people talking about the fight. And I think obviously the more interviews he does and everything else, and he's obviously one of those fighters that just likes to let his, uh, his hands do the talking. But is it something that he get that these guys get training with or is it just something that it's just more and more interviews that gets them up to it? I mean, you could probably both ans- answer this one. Yeah, well, I remember at the yeah. start... Oh, you go, Glenn, you're right. Sorry, I should have no, picked Benny, the name please, there. No, no, Benny, no, go ahead, mate. You're all right, Benny, keep going. Yeah, I was going to say, at the start of Liam's career, he really struggled with it. He's getting a lot better now. But um, Jeff Horn gave him some advice. Like, Liam was just answering the things with one word answers and the mm-hmm. questions and Je- Jeff Horn was also the same at the start. He um, he really struggled with it and he said to Liam, mate, look, the best way to do it at the start is just repeat the question back. If someone asks you, how do you feel like you're going to go, Jeff, today, rather than saying good, say, how do I feel like I'm going to go? I feel like, you know, I've been training yeah. really well and you can extend on that. It's just a way to keep talking and get it going. Like, that's the way he started. Liam's a, little, a lot better now. Um, you know, he's, he's never going to be Floyd Mayweather, but, mm. you know, he, he's, he's didn't get raised like that over here another thing is when we talk about the chat you listen to the guys that we're sparring against and their coaches they don't stop talking the whole time and they're talking mm. trash the whole time and it's inspiring I mean, yeah, it's, 100%. yeah and it, but what, where i'm getting to with that is if you did that in australia you'd never get invited back to that gym to mm. spar yeah and that's all right i get it I, I would feel the same way to a degree but i mean we've got to open our minds a little bit it, it kind of is what it is if you want to if you want to put the guys under pressure and all the rest of it, they've got to deal with this stuff as well. I mean, the crowd's not quiet when you're fighting. So, I mean, get used to it. You've got to focus on the job and you've got to get the job done. It's a really good point, isn't it, Glenn, that he's right. I mean, and I've been to a lot of the gyms over there and you've been obviously around forever and seen, you know, all the big gyms out there. But he's right. Like, you go to these gyms, in the, especially obviously in the States, 
They're a whole different ball game to Australian gyms. We're nice and polite. We help each other out. Over there, it's literally a dog fight when you go over there sparring, isn't it? Oh, it is, and it's so bloody noisy. Like mm. even even yeah. our gym, which is a a really a really good gym, and we have a we have our book times. The activity in the background is it does wear you down. We're not used to it. We're we're far mm. from it. But the American gyms, the American culture is bold and brash, and it's uh, it's all about. For, for sometimes we look at it and think, my God, this is this can't be about the fighting. This has got to be about the egos. And there's a lot of that over here. The <laughs> egos that drive boxing in America are just phenomenal egos. They live in a different world to us. And our boys have to, uh, I, I certainly won't say embrace that. I don't. I wouldn't want that from any of our boys. Mm. But um, mm. the commercial reality of elite boxing is that if you want to get paid the big dollars, it is tied entirely to the success of the event. There's no no two qualms about it. If you don't have that ability to engage and attract people who want to, for whatever reason, buy the pay per view or go and get a ticket, you are uh, you then become just another fighter. Mm. So when you get to the elite mm. level, sure you've got the skills, but it's about two things: it's about ability and marketability. And if you fail either you're going to fail in the big picture. So in terms of the boys getting better at it, yeah, we, I, I spend time with them, talking to them, just trying to explain that you you have to become the Donald Trump when you're on the TV camera. You've got to be someone. Someone wants to actually turn up the volume to hear rather than say, who's that? So it's a game, and it, but it's a commercial game. And the end game of it all, uh, Lyndon, is if you want to sign big dollar contracts at elite level and i hope all our boys get that opportunity um you've got to be able to sell and you've got to fill an arena not an easy task when in a place like las vegas when on any given night there's 50 60 100 shows going on at different places trying to get everybody's dollar out of their pocket so it's a massive competitive market here mate so you either got to step up or accept the fact that you're going to be on the lower level of payments as well one, one question, just a little bit off topic there, Glenn, sort of on the same thing, but when, when and Ben as well, like when you're on these big shows, whether it be in Australia or overseas, do there actually networks, uh, is there like a little list of rules or little no-go zones? I've always wondered that because it seems to be a bit loose here in Australia. I mean, we saw Mark Sleeves drop the C-bomb on live TV the other day. Do the networks actually give you a little bit of things you can and can't do while you're representing the, the network? Oh, I, I, I would think, uh, no, they're not going to restrict the personalities of the fighters. Mm. Um, and keep in mind that uh, the world we live in today, uh, Lyndon, uh, over here, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's part and parcel of everyday culture, the language and what we used to call profanities is now in every, every time you turn the TV on. So it's, it oh, sadly became it. something that a lot of people are used to. But um, close the door. For, for, yeah, yeah. So I, I, there's no. I've never seen a list, and I've never been asked by any of the uh, production teams or the promoters to uh, tone it down. But then again, none of my fighters are that way inclined, mm. so they're all very respectful. But if you have uh, have a look at uh, some of the um, uh, the stuff that you've seen recently with the UFC and everybody, there's. Mm. There's no, uh, there's no um, barriers anymore, mate. Say what you like and punch on when you like and push each other off the stage when you like and, you know, trash people's families when you like. It's just, mm. for me personally, it's not, not where I thought the sport would end up, but this is certainly not where I thought the world would end up either, mate. So it is what it is. No, exactly. And you're right. I mean, I think the UFC thing has sort of changed the uh, the mindset of a lot of boxers out there. Ben, do you do you think it's essential? I understand like there's the, the to and fro and everything else. I know we're getting off topic here. We'll get back on in a second. But do you, are you a little bit old school like me? We, uh, you like it to a point, but these days there's so many of them just tend to go over and actually make almost make you cringe. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was watching. I don't get old, by the way. I'm showing my age here. But... Oh, man, that that word certainly covers it. I reckon. Uh, I just sometimes, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. do we really have to do, go that far? But anyway, as I said, I'm showing my age. What do you think, Ben? You're about my vintage. Yeah, I'm about 15 years younger than you. But um... oh, yeah, is that right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll obviously disagree with me, but Glenn will understand where I'm coming from. I, I look, I like a bit of. Bit argy bargy, but these days it just seems like, oh my god. Anyway, go ahead. 
I, I was watching some this morning of, of Chael Sonnen when he was in the UFC. He was the best shit talker there was. And, oh, yeah. he, he stepped over the line a fair bit. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't personally like it or dislike it. I don't really mind because at the end of the day, I think back to, um, you know, Ali's coach. When Ali used to do it all, he didn't mm. get involved in any of it. I mean, it's, it's. I look at it like it's the fighter's career. It's their choice. Whatever character they want to play, that they've got to be a character if they want to sell tickets. Um, I would prefer that they didn't step over the line, but I do like a little bit of chat because at the end of the day, it brings interest to the sport, it brings interest to the fighter's name, and then they get better opportunities. I mean, should have Sleeves been in the ring with Sam Goodman? Probably not, but no. he sold. I mean, that was probably he one sold of the best quite well. To, it was the best lead up to a Sam Goodman fight that I've seen. He, and he I was... really, really, really rate Sammy. But mm. Sammy's a fighter. He's a fighter worried about the fight, and he does what he needs to do. But you know, it takes Mark Mark Sleeves is the, is the good dancing partner in that situation because of what he brought to the table. So it's important. Um, but yeah, you, you do have to watch out with some. Sometimes people cross the line and say some really ridiculous stuff. Yeah, no, you're spot on there, and and and, I, and I've been critical about the fact that that fight was uh, pay per view, but you cannot take it away from Mark Sleeves. He did absolutely everything, everything he possibly could to build that fight up, and I hope he he got looked after and um you know in the pocket. But uh, yeah, he did a great <laughs> job. But uh, Glenn, just one more thing on this sort of subject. You've got to agree with me though that we should keep the fathers out of the uh, the press conferences. What do you think of that? Yeah, look, you know my thoughts on the on the the lanes that we all operate in. I'm a mm. big believer in that. You 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 need to specialise in the area that you're good at, and you stay within that. You don't encroach in anyone else's area. Uh, unfortunately, father son relationships where we've got personal and very heavy attachment, it doesn't work. It's a, it's a strain on, on both parties. There's a stress that comes to the fighter, and there's a stress that comes to the father. So. Yeah, look, I agree. The father-son stuff's a problem. And, of course, it always seems to end up going from boxing to family-related insults, and I don't mm. like that. No. I don't believe there's room for that. You know, you've got, you've got two boys that are going to fight. Sure, let them fight and let them have a go at each other. That's all good. But when you bring family and the likes into it, that's not where it needs to be. And I think that really sets a poor standard going forward, that if that was the case, what's next? Do they start attacking the mums and the sisters? Yeah. And I don't, I just don't agree with that. And, I, and, and I'm also a big believer in uh, the same old story. I don't believe that you can be a coach and a manager and a promoter uh, and wear the same hat. Each of those people have specialised jobs and they need to keep a degree of respect about what they do. Otherwise, you become, uh, instead of being great at what you do, you become poor at being all three. So far better to, to use your expertise for good rather than just for average. Um, so, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Glenn, I was going to ask you as well. I know it's probably going to come up at some stage. Have you happened to run into your old mate, Michael Zarafa, in your travels up and down the strip? Honestly, mate, um, no, I haven't. Um, I, I'm not even sure if Michael's here. There's He's here. Been... He's there, yeah. Oh, is he? Okay, yeah, yeah good. I look, very, very little sort of said or... I don't know if I've actually seen much. Have you guys, Benny, Lyndon, have you seen much from over here? Nothing. Maybe maybe it's a good thing for Michael that he's got his head down and um, and staying off all the distractions so that he's ready on the night. But mate, no, nothing. I couldn't. I don't, I'm not going to comment because uh, he's got a world title in front of him and uh, he's got he knows the job he's got ahead. So we're best just to concentrate on what we're doing and and let him do the same. Yeah, no, he's spot on, mate. And all, all differences aside, I'm sure at the end of the day he's still happy. There's another Australian fighting on on the card for a world title. And we've got obviously Liam the week before, and then we've got Sky Nicholson the week after. So Benny, I mean, geez, the, the, you know, the stage of Australian boxing, we've got four Aussies in massive fights within the space of seven days. It's just unheard of, isn't it? Oh, hundred percent, mate. I, I, I look forward to the Zarafa fight. He's an Australian. So, I mean, I'll be there screaming his name out for sure. I know he was there when um, Wilson fought a few times and, at the end of the day, I mean, I don't, I don't know him very well, but he's an Australian boxer and he'll have my full support. Mm, yeah, no, I, I agree. And I know he, he does cop a lot. And I, I suppose it's probably the, the gland, it's probably the worst thing you can do is uh, get try and ruffle the feathers of Tim, who's such, uh, or the whole name's beloved here in Australia. So he's probably, I think in, in respect, uh, in hindsight, wouldn't have maybe uh, gone as hard as he did. But at the end of the day, he's an Aussie fighter and, and we want all Aussies to, to be at, at that world stage. 
Yeah, look, it's old news, mate. And mm. and how long do you mm. hang on to that stuff yeah. for? At the end of the day, everyone's got a job, and you know he's he's done he's done what he needed to do to get to his opportunity. So good luck to him. And mm. um, and mm. and even as far as Tim goes, it's, it's never on Tim's mind. Tim's focused purely on what he's got to do. And at the end of it, as we said, you know, it's um, it's the Australians are having a crack, and uh, and good luck to and then the next range that comes through. I, I just, I just hope that we keep on producing at the level we are at the moment, and Australian boxing is uh, is going to be a force to reckon with into the future. That's for sure. Mm. Nah, and Ben, you've got there was a big female fight on your card as well. I can't remember the names, but uh, offhand, but it was, uh, it's a world title fight, I think, isn't it, on the undercard? I got no idea, mate. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> just focused on your your fight. That's fair enough. Yeah, I got no. Clue. There is a world title on Benny's card. Two girls. I'm not sure their names either, but. Yeah, there's one on there for sure. Yeah. How's it been dealing with uh, Top Rank again, Ben, after the, the, the episode from last time? All good? No, I don't have anything to do with it. Glenn takes care of all that. Okay. As Glenn said, I just coach, Glenn manages, and um, Liam, he does the fighting. So, yeah, no, I haven't had anything to do with any of it, to be honest. Mm. And, uh, Glenn, well, with that, how, like, you obviously dealt with PVC for the Tim side and Top Rank with uh, the Liam side. There's no dramas with, with all the different organisations? No, mate. No, they've been um, very receptive, and uh, I mean, we're taking a different approach for Liam this time. We've left no stone unturned. We've we've planned every move to cover ourselves. There, there you know, when you have an ex- an experience like Navarrete, the 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 greatest thing you can do from that is learn. Uh, it's no good just bringing it up and bitching about what we thought and how hard we were done by. At the end of the day, we we've learned. We put things in place. We put protections in place. Uh, we'll have the right people and we'll make sure that Liam gets well and truly protected from all that nonsense so that it's the same for Tim, it's the same for Nikita, any fighter. Our job as a team, coach, managers, corner and everybody is to let those boys get through those ropes and give them the absolute maximum opportunity, create that environment that gives them 100% to go and do what they have to do without the distraction or fear that something's untoward or something's happening in the background that shouldn't be. I, I would be very disappointed if we see any of that again. Um, top ranks people have been terrific, as have PBC. So we can't ask for any more. We've got our opportunity. As long as we do our job, Liam will do his job. Tim will do his job. And we'll all clamber back onto them planes, bringing home a heap of belts. So, Glenn, just still on Liam there. Uh, obviously, we're all hoping he gets the job done. Let's say he, he gets through this fight. Is he going to stay at one thirty and try and try for... Uh, or what might could be uh, might be the vacant WBO belt, or uh, is he going to maybe jump to lightweight? Or actually, just on that too, was it ever in play with Navarrete saying he's going to go to one thirty five? Was the the this uh, ever in play that this might actually be for the vacant title? Yeah, look, it was, uh, and it was floating for quite a while. It, it is going to be an interim title. Yeah. Um. So so the the simple layout of the law land is that Navarrete has. A fight coming up. I think it's May. It's either late April or May. I'm not sure. Um, and if he's successful in that, moving up a weight class, then he gets a very short period of time on the back of that fight, Linden, to decide which belt he wants to keep. Now, the beauty for us is, as you know, with the WBO, in the same circumstances as Tim. Should when Liam beats Oscar Valdez uh, in two weeks' time and becomes the interim champ, and Navarrete decides to stay up uh, at the higher weight class. There's every chance that Liam Wilson by mid-May could be the full WBO champion uh, along the same route that Tim Zhu's taken. And then the whole world changes for Liam. Then we move into full world championship status and he gets to defend his title and we move up into the absolute 1% elite and Liam Wilson will be our next great, great Aussie champ and very proud of him. He's a terrific young man and he deserves everything he gets. When you see what these guys put in, they deserve everything they get. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And and uh, Ben, that must be a a great little carrot to have hanging out there, uh, you know, to get past this fight. What might await Liam after this one? Yeah, mate, always it is. Of course it is. Um, yeah, I'm just super proud of Liam. I mean, it was it was only seven or eight years ago that we were training on a basketball court in Brisbane. So you know, it's happened very quickly. Um, you know, and, and the majority of the thanks has to go to Liam's ability because without Liam's ability. Um, you know, I'm on the basketball court, aren't I? So I'm not stupid. I understand the way it works. He's He's got everything that, you know, you need to, to be at that top 1%. 
and you know on fight night all you have to do is deliver the goods and you know, he, will, he will be so you know we're looking forward to it mate oh, that's, that's awesome and uh, and you guys as I said earlier will be heading up to the fight so what are your picks on the night Ben uh, prediction obviously we, we think Tim's going to win what about the other fights on the card The uh, so we've got obviously Michael and Lara and we've got Rowley and Cruz yeah I'm looking forward to the Rowley Cruz fight too mm. I think Cruz might just run through him to be honest Mm. He's going to just keep walking, walking, walking up, walking up. Rolly, I saw something Rolly said the other day that he's not going to walk through my shots. He'll he'll start going. He doesn't know how to go backwards. Mm. He's like, he won't keep walking up. Well, what the fuck's he going to do if he doesn't walk up? He, I'm <laughs> exactly. telling you. He's, he's going to walk up. And he's, uh, he's an absolute nightmare. Right, right, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. He's not going to be boxing South for off the back foot, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, uh, and, and Glenn, uh, Nikita's over there in Vegas. What's next for him? I know you can't say too much. There's been a lot of talk that maybe Carl Mazzuri is on the on the table for, for next one next month. Is that maybe something you can let us know at, uh, what's happening soon? Oh, a couple of names right out there at the moment, uh, Lyndon, and as you know, uh, until we've got a signature, it's a pointless exercise. But, mm. yeah, Nikita mm. will be back in um, towards the end of April, uh, and uh, he, he is uh, he's really just... It's such it's such an interesting concept to watch Nikita in Australia versus Nikita in America, and the guys that Nikita's currently sparring with are former Olympians, former champions. We've got uh, we've got an Uzbek, we've got a French uh, a French guy, and we've got a Mexican guy, and they are all giving it to Nikita, and Nikita's giving it back. So this is the building blocks that we talk about for our fighters. Nikita's next fight is his eighth fight, so he's really well and truly advanced of where he probably should be uh he's fighting pay-per-views um but there's not much you can do about that when your brother's tim zoo and your dad's cost you zoo it's mm. part of the business and mm. nikita is maturing into it beautifully so i can't tell you who mate but yeah expect it'll be a good fight um no, maddie and the no limits boys are working on that as we speak but i will say this i am so confident and happy with the liam wilson that i'm seeing here uh, I believe Liam Wilson will take care of Oscar Valdez, as I believe Tim Zhu will take care of Keith Thurman. So the two big American fights, I'm, I never I never make uh, predictions or opinions. I just believe in my own heart, watching both these boys and the, the place they're in mentally and physically right now. I don't know, Benny might want to have something on this. I'm just not sure if we could have done anything better for Liam for this camp with the time we've got left, which is only a week left of sparring and then we're in Arizona. So I'm just not sure if there's any more we could have done and pretty much the same for Tim. Mm. Ben? No, he, you're right. You're right. There's 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 nothing more that could have been done. Liam's done uh, going on a 12-week camp. You know, he's had a first two weeks leading into it. He's um, he spent two weeks in Thailand doing conditioning. You come back, we've got the rounds we needed at home. Then we come over here straight into the hard stuff. And this is coming off you know, two 10 round fights. So he's got rounds under his belt. He had a great preparation. You know, at the end of the day, we'll be able to look ourselves in the mirror before we go into that ring and know that we're fully prepared to, to put in our best effort, which is all we can do, isn't it? So, mm. I mean, we put in the best, best preparation and, you know, the best effort, then the results will be what they will be. And, and I presume that's going to be, you know, Liam Wilson's hand being raised. Well, we've got a couple more questions before we let you go. First one, did you both go and check out the NRL in Vegas? Now, as a Victorian, I don't know anything about rugby league. I can't just call it rugby. It's got to be league. Did you go and check it out, and how was it? Yes, yeah, I went. Yeah, um, we, we got put in a box with Tim, um, Liam, Nikita, and Igor. So yeah, it was pretty surreal, to be honest. I mean, I haven't really thought about it until you just said it. But, yeah, <laughs> fucking out of this world, to be honest. It was crazy. Absolutely. It was it was really good too. We'd been here a couple of weeks, so just to see so many Aussies and you know, everyone getting pictures with Liam and everyone knows who he is now over here. So all the Aussies were you know, coming to the gym, watching him spar and getting him to sign all this stuff and, you know, amazing. It's just, it's exactly what, it was a very good, um, you know, a lift in the camp halfway through our time over here. So yeah, I really appreciate the No Limit Boys for hooking us up with that because, yeah, that was a once in a lifetime. Yeah, it was a great spectacle, Glenn. I did, mate. I didn't make it. I I was in LA on some other for another fighter uh, doing some business there, mate. So I spent my whole life in NRL stadiums for twenty odd years with NRL clubs. So um, I, I would love to have gone just to be with the boys, but yeah, I just had some business that needed to be uh, 
worked on in LA. And so I, I actually got out here a couple of days after the NRL uh, train had headed back home. But uh, I'm glad the boys got to do it. Legion Stadium is just mm. mind blowing. It's a, it's an experience right. in itself. But it was a great it was a great um, a great uh, job done by the NRL and a, a great effort. Uh, and a great opportunity to showcase uh, Australian athletes and sport. So you can't go wrong, can you? Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah. As a, like as a, an AFL man myself, I take my hat off to NRL. They really show the innovation that you need to grow your sport. And I thought, uh, yeah, they did a, a great job at probably showing the AFL how to uh, market their sport. So uh, uh, um, it pains me to say that, but. Hats off where, where credit's due. So just uh, a, a last question for both of you first. Ben, uh, I know we've sort of touched on it. All the, the fans that are going over there as well as watching on, on TV over here, what can we expect from Liam Wilson versus Valdez on March the, uh, was it March 30th over here, 29th in, in the States? Actually, just one thing before you answer that. Is it a bit strange you got to fight on Good Friday? It just seems like just totally bizarre to me. <laughs> I didn't even think about it, mate. I didn't even know it was a Good Friday. <laughs> Actually, that makes sense you now because my, my missus isn't coming over because she doesn't want to leave the kids for Easter. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I didn't even know I that. was popular. I'm coming over, so I'm really popular with my family. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, mate, we, we, we just expect to see the, the best version of Liam Wilson thus far. I mean, you know, everything everything's lining up in regards to the fact that he's had the two fights coming off 10-rounders. Um He's stepping up in opposition. We know he does better when he steps up in opposition. The preparation's been fantastic. He's in a great headspace. His sparring's been amazing. He, he couldn't blow out a candle in regards to his fitness. Um, he, he's sharp as can be. So, yeah, we, we do expect to see the best version. And uh, I'm sure that all the Mexicans and everybody else have written us off, but it doesn't matter about people's thoughts because once the bell goes, it's two guys in the ring. And I know that one guy's, you know, he's willing to do whatever it takes to win the fight. And, and that, that's the plan. Now, you've obviously been to Glendale, as we said last time, in Everate. For people like me that are actually coming over to Glendale, is there anything to do ex there except for the fights? I'm there for three days. So hook us up if you can with things to do while we're there. Oh, shopping. Is that the scary thought, Benny? <laughs> <laughs> Go to Scottsdale. There's mad shops there. There's, it's actually a pretty cool little place. It's like a sporting okay. pre precinct where we stay. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a cool place. But apart from the shops and the sporting precincts, it's, there's a whole lot of desert. That's about it, all right. And and Glenn, obviously, we're in Vegas where Tim is, so no shortage of things to, to do there. But uh, again, I know we all think what we're going to expect. What can all the fight fans expect from uh, Tim Zhu when he gets in there with with uh, experienced campaigner in Keith Thurman? I think you're going to see a, a Tim Zhu hell bent on a, on a another great win and preferably uh, um, a just a demolition of Keith Thurman to make a statement to the American audience to let them know that. This Tim Zoo is the real deal, and if you had any doubt, we plan to take that away on, on the 30th at T-Mobile Arena. Um, it's that time for Tim to uh, put everything that he's done uh, on the table, leave nothing in the ring, and, and take care of the business, which he's done now for 24 fights. So the 24 opponents have come and said that Tim's not up to it. It's a different level, and 24 have failed, so we tend to make that 25. So Ooh, for all of our Aussie fans... Man. Yeah, Jesus all of our Aussie God. fans, all of our Aussie sponsors, everybody that's supported us, in particular our sponsors, these camps are not a cheap exercise and to do them properly and to give these guys the opportunity, it does cost. Um, I just want to say from my side and from our team side, and this covers Liam and Tim, uh, thank you to everybody for the amazing support, not just the sponsors and the financial support, but the constant messaging of... Good, good luck and good wishes. Uh, it goes a long way. And to the te to the teams, to the sacrifice and the amount of time they take over here away from their families, thanks to all of those guys for the effort because, as I said, it all comes down to two boys in the ring on the night. Um, if we've done our job, then we go home happy. If we, uh, it's, it's the culmination of a lot of people and a lot of work and a lot of support, and we're grateful to every single person that contributes no, that's that's great stuff, mate. And and I'm sure speaking with all the other, other Aussies that are going over there, I can't wait. And all the ones that are going to be watching at home, we can't. It's just so proud to see uh, two guys at the level, 24 hours apart, and all the other fighters as well. And I can't wait to get over there. Firstly, to Glendale, uh, Arizona. I think I'm over there on the 26th of March. I think it is. So uh, I'll make sure I uh, touch base while I'm there, Benny. 
and uh, and of course fight day in Las Vegas with uh, with Glenn. So thanks again, guys. Really appreciate you being on, Glenn. You better get going. You're going to get done for laundering the way you're going. You're hanging out at a department store or something there. So the Yanks don't muck around. They'll they'll be turfing you out soon. I'm I'm down here looking for new socks for Benny. <laughs> he knows it. <laughs> oh, hey, he's hey, coming Glenn, last, last time I was in Vegas, I got there late at night. They lost my bag at the uh, airport. So I had to go across to the CVS or wherever it's called to buy some socks. I had to get the attendant to unlock the socks. The socks were locked up, if you can believe that. That's how well they're going in Vegas. <laughs> no way, I'm telling you why I'm shopping. Oh, I won't yeah, ask. That's, a, no, that's hilarious. Tell, tell the story, Glenn. It's hilarious. Um, Oh, oh well, Christ! Well, right. well, we'll let. Lost his. Uh... <laughs> oh, we just missed the last bit there, but but it's uh, but it's all good. Oh, I, God. I, just, I just said uh, I'm happy to bow out and let you and Benny talk about that one. <laughs> Oh, good. Well, look, thanks again, guys. Really, really appreciate you taking the time out of busy schedules to have a bit of a chat with us and, and everyone watching online here. And I can't wait to, to catch up and see the boys live in person um, on the 26th and, and the 30th. Good on you, mate. No limit boxing, Pleasure baby. as always. No limit boxing. Do Let's it. Go. No limits. Taking care of business. Good stuff, guys. Thanks again. See you, boys. See you, mate. See Bye. Boys.